are feeling this new influx of Christ love light energy that has been flowing into the earth. I hope you guys caught my update on Starseed mission support yesterday because I really gave an introduction on the kind of inner energies that we're interfacing with, um, the DNA upgrades that are available for us. I think the main transmission that the uh, Arcturian teams would like to co-create with us today is this exploration of uh, the medicine container. So at this point we're experiencing that when we hold a field in our space, in our aura, in our mind, we are holding this vibration of wholeness, of pure, pristine, living light, true love, unconditional love. Um, the true unconditional love that is truly unconditional, like it's not sticky, it's not seeking for exchange, it's just purely existing inside of that love itself. Totally whole and full of its own abundance. It's like it's full of its self. <laughs> um, in that it's just in touch with the infinite love that is everywhere. And so as that love is what is already present inside of us, it fills up our body. It fills up all the places inside of ourself that has called and needed that love. And that love comes into our body and it patches up all the holes. It finds all of the cracks in the sidewalks and in the foundations and all the places that we're hurting all the places that we're seeking to be met, seeking acknowledgement, seeking anything. And it just fills us up so much that then it just fills up our whole body and it seeps out into our aura. And then at that point, it begins to basically pour and flow into everything because we find that this love, it almost has a mind of its own and has a consciousness of its own. It is here to reclaim this world. It is here to give every human being a hug. <laughs> it has no intention in judging anything. <laughs> it just literally is here to reclaim all of its children, all of them. Um, and this is the essence, the matter of the medicine container that we are holding on this planet. Uh, it's very interesting though, because this is the true love and light that I think when people say love and light and in the new age community, there are talking about it and accessing it and trying to do meditations about it this is the force that they are talking about and yet this love and light that we're talking about it is so full of also power because it is source it is creation is all that is it is experienced as this quality as this essence of love but really it's carrying also the power of all of creation. So it has no fears because nothing can taint it. There is nothing that can harm this love. There's nothing that can destroy it. And so because this love knows that so deeply in itself, it can go into the darkest of places. It can explore and face the greatest of pain and still know itself in its essence. And so it's very likely that this, as I, this is my personal experience, is that with every great expansion of presence of love comes this burst of healing because of all the things which my human self felt was impossible to process, impossible to meet fully it's all of a sudden possible to do so in presence of our true essence and this is true for us on a personal level 
but when we speak these things we're really talking about our planetary and even universal reality because this is the architecture or the technology in which we are using to repair this planetary system to liberate and support the liberation of all of humanity inside of this planetary sphere as well as then correlating that healing out into the entire universal body uh, to all the places where those tears those holes those places where the great pain are carried and so It's quite immaculate that we are now coming into contact with this consciousness. It is so peaceful, um, but it's like this silent power. It doesn't have a need to argue about its point of view. It doesn't have a need to be acknowledged. Its power is inherent in its being and it's felt uh, and this is the energy that we're going to be working with today and probably all days <laughs> for the rest of our life <laughs> um, but particularly we are going to be working with a dissolution of walls the hardened corners of our being um, whatever comes up for you today is absolutely welcomed if at any point it feels too intense or it feels like you're getting attacked or it feels like it's difficult just keep breathing and allow it to move because I think that when we first turn the lights on, the critters scurry. <laughs> and they were doing very well in concealing themselves in stories and judgment and strength. Patterns and personalities that aren't founded on the true essence of pure love. And these are the parts of ourselves that may be afraid to allow this true essence to fully be seen. And that is totally understandable because this light has gone through quite the genocide on this planet over the last little while. In all ways, this light has been there's been beings trying to beat this light out of the planet, but clearly they have failed. And that's just a testament to the power of this light. <laughs> um, it's very fascinating because I've been obsessed with low-key, chill Christian music for the last week. I don't know why nobody ever tipped me off to this incredible resource. I know that some of the lyrics sometimes, you know, they're really masculine, God heavy, and they talk about some things and the way that they project onto Jesus is a little bit of distortions here and there. But ultimately, the energy in these the songs, it's so pure is the energy of devotion. And even though people might have projected onto Jesus and like devoted to him and projected their inner power onto an external force which was like their trick the church thought that they could use that as a way to stamp stomp out the light but clearly they failed because throughout all the genocides and all the religious programming and all the wars that were fought and all of the executions and all the ways that they have tried to literally stamp out this light and right now I'm seeing this vision as every single lifetime the Christ light has ever incarnated as you and I and any other being of our Christed star family, the true guardian star seed families, 
who are working on this Christos realignment mission for a very long time. In any lifetime we have ever incarnated, we are part of this field of energy. Um, and if we could tap into the oneness that we are, instead of the lifetimes that we as an individual were killed uh, or tortured or <laughs> persecuted in any way, we will see that together our light has created quite a force on this planet. So much so that this frequency is very much alive on the planet. It has not been killed at all. <laughs> it might appear so on the surface, right? It might appear so in the symbols that they've been using to represent the Christ, the crucifixion. But ultimately, when you tap into the grids and the castles and the pyramids and the other sacred sites that are held together by nature, and even the collective memory banks, and even the heart of many Christians that have lost memory of this true original mystery school connection to universal consciousness, this holographic experience of life itself as a human, you will find that this energy is very much quite alive. And that was something that was very exciting. We will find that there are forces inside of our own body that fights this. There are consciousness inserts inside of our own mind that wants us to believe that we have to struggle that there's some big galactic universal war happening and there is something that wants us to believe that is anywhere near as powerful as God itself, as creation. It wants to believe that we have to struggle to clear these implants and to heal these parts of ourselves and these distortions. When the truth is, those thoughts and those beliefs they are the hijack. And that is the part of the AI construct, false consciousness, that we're going to be dissolving today. And my intention is that for us to come into a union, come into a dissolution, coming into a complete remembrance of the true Christed presence, presence of divine consciousness, divine love. And this is not really, I don't know, if, I don't think anyone in this room is thinking it, but I do find it funny because a lot of New Agers, they quote unquote, run back to Jesus. And I don't feel like this is really happening to me because it really feels like my starseed mission is finally making sense. Like there's a integration that's happening. And I think that's what wholeness is when you come in, when you're really pulling in the parts and you're moving towards wholeness is hopefully your fragmented reality really starts to settle back into a oneness and that's really what we want um i've been feeling the energies of de-bifurcation <laughs> um de-bifurcation so the way that i experienced this was uh, i think on the 10 11 gateway i was sitting in the car um i think shane was getting a chiropractic adjustment i was just chilling in the car and i was just watching people walk on the street and i could just feel this sparkling golden light i was already noticing this influx of christed energy which by the way my friend uh, Alexis from Ascension Diaries, she um, collects kind of scientific data about cosmic weather. And apparently we discovered this new nebula that just erupted or something. And it just sent this huge burst of gamma rays, which for those of you who know about galactic and cosmic radiation, gamma rays are directly associated with the activation of DNA. And so even on a kind of a galactic material level, there was an alignment where there was a burst. Now it's kind of a causation thing. 
obviously the intention of a increase in consciousness occurred first as an intention but then out of that intention came this material experience of this literal star erupting and just sand sending an enormous it was saying this is the largest mass of gamma rays we've ever scientifically noted right um i can post this uh the screenshots of this paper on our heartbeat community later. Uh, I guess I'll also post it underneath this recording. Um, but this is immense. I just saw this yesterday. And so obviously we felt the receiving end of this energy that had come to earth through this massive burst of cosmic stellar gamma radiation. That is also our us arriving onto the planet simultaneously because we are also the stars that source dreamt into creation that then burst onto this planet. <laughs> uh, so this golden light was radiating around the street and I was watching these people walk by and I was just seeing almost like this golden light turning into these little orbs and they were tapping people on the shoulder right like they were just slightly outside of this density so people can see them but it was this happiness i could feel this happiness because they knew that sooner or later every single man woman and child was gonna all of a sudden be able to hear this tap on the shoulder that source and creation loves them so much and that they are so loved and so wanted and so perfect and so free to exist <laughs> and be alive and enjoy creation as it was created for them. And I felt such an immense happiness just watching every single person on the street walking by, getting this subtle, quiet whisper tap on the shoulder. And I could feel that there was Christmas coming for them soon. And in that moment, I felt this collapse. This collapse that was the dissolution of the barriers between the New Age society, those who are awakening. And I believe that the New Age society was really, I call it a nursery. It's like a, uh, what are they called? A warm, glass building for plants <laughs> as they're growing right a greenhouse it's a greenhouse because we are these star seeds and in order for us to fully blossom into our true self it was too hard inside of the false matrix there was all of these energies that were coming at us we were going to have to fight so hard just to come into ourselves and so we created this community this bubble Right? This greenhouse for us to come into ourselves. This has been the new age community, the spiritual awakening community. And so we got so into our own world that it really felt like there was a quote unquote bifurcation. The bifurcation is real because there has been like we created the bifurcation by us rising up and out of the false matrix and following our own guidance and coming together and staying true to ourselves. So that we could create this safe space for us to grow grow into our fullness because when we're growing we're really in a lot of vulnerability right and i think this is why that the the earth star academy container we are really wanting to keep the space so contained and of right structure because we know how vulnerable we are when we're just emerging out of our star seed and we want to explore and remember and access everything we want to see all the spiritual things and we don't yet realize that when we first wake up out of the 3d and we enter into the astral plane that there are all sorts of all the things <laughs> but really the new age community has held us so that we found each other and we could grow into ourself now obviously there logically would be a couple of things that could happen one of them is we just ascend right out of here 
right? We just ascend right out of this planet or we get picked up by some starships <laughs> and we just leave the humans here and we go home. <laughs> and that would be a very anti-climactic movie. <laughs> I mean, I didn't just go to Earth and go through those years just beating my head on the wall, trying to get out of the false matrix, trying to save the world, <laughs> trying to bring heaven on Earth just to fly off into space. <laughs> that wouldn't have made any sense. It would have been way too much effort. Why wouldn't I have just stayed upstairs? <laughs> so... We're graduating in the next years, and it's nothing that is in a rush. And we'll find that the energy of source, of God, of creation, of nature, it is also elegant. There is, it's like, um, I guess, you know, like those movies about those secret agents, and they're so suave, right? They're so smooth. They're not fumbling around and they're fumbling with their gun, right? They're just so smooth, and they get all the ladies. It's kind of that. I mean, it's, not, it's just an example, but the energy of creation, it is pure elegance. And it dances through these distortions. And it, I mean, it has the imagination and the creation power of all of that is. I believe that we as human beings, you know, we are really only catching slivers of that intelligence we can only understand and perceive so much of that but really when we sit in nature we begin to see all of the dna strands that are just working all the time in perfect synchrony and that's only just this one little blip of perfection of creation operating in ecological genius and so Ooh, we're realizing that that is our true essence, that elegance, that intelligence, that peace, that power. And as we really begin to land that energy, that embodiment into our body, we ask ourselves, well, where does this energy want to go? Where does this curiosity, where does this natural flow of creation want to go? And to me, it seems like it just wants to be a part of everything on this planet. It wants to smell every tree. I don't know if anyone just goes around sniffing bark, but every time we come to a really cool tree, Shane literally just like takes a little bit of bark and puts it in his mouth. And I'm like, that's definitely a habit that you still have from some other lifetime <laughs> because he does it all the time. I just, just, right? It just wants to experience every detail of this beautiful place we literally waited eternity to experience. <laughs> and so then when that landing occurs, then it really begins to transform into compassion when it meets the places in the reality where that peace is not present because there is nature and there is the creatures and the beauty and the magic and the things that we can do with our hands and our body <laughs> the fun that we could be having and then there's the people that aren't having any fun and the animals that aren't having any fun. And then we're like, well, I'm pretty sure everybody's supposed to be having fun. So, <laughs> and then you're like, I think that's my mission. It's just so that everyone is having fun on this planet. <laughs> it's so that I am operating from the original template, which is I'm having fun. And then from that place, uh, it begins to work on our DNA. And so it's very interesting because 
I'm definitely feeling this energy beginning to dissolve the tension that I have in my body. The motto that I've been working with this week is stop trying to do God's job without God. Stop trying to do God's job without God. And I almost giggle every time I say it because I just feel... <laughs> um, So much compassion going out to my all ultra diligent human parts that really just wanted to get the job done. They just really cared a lot. They just really wanted to do a good job. And my earth parts really forgot what kind of army or creational force that has got my back and my sides, and my front, and my ups and downs in all directions. <sighs> um, and so what's interesting is that that begins to transform the density where this, it's almost like switching gears because when there is more density in our light body, when our DNA is in a lower resonant form, it's kind of like we're guzzling diesel and we're guzzling gas, but we're very low fuel efficiency. Um, because we just need so much energy to get moving in this 3D reality. And that when we actually balance that out with truly receiving the true essence that which we are, um, relaxing and falling back into the bed of rose petals made of God's love, remembering that that's our true essence, it begins to transform, right? We begin to do this job that God, it's God's job. We're allowing God to do its job <laughs> instead of trying to do it ourselves. And then when we allow that to alchemize and lighten our light body, and that happens through the healing, it happens through the tears, the screaming on the floor, right? And then the, the just <sighs> letting go of anything that feels bad right now. Whatever feels bad, give it to God. Give it up. Let it go can't let go of anything you're not holding on to. We're holding on to it for some reason. It's probably our parts, right? Going to the parts work in 1.4 for those of you that are just joining now. So this has all been a steady spiral process for us to come to a place where we can actually just say, you know what? I can just let it go. And that becomes a shortcut. And so, as all of those alchemical processes are happening, there is a timeline or a bifurcation collapse where then God actually lands on the planet. And this is when the um, the new age curses really come into view, right? any part of the reality that is trying to take our attention away trying to say that oh you know we don't need to be doing anything we can just live in our love and light or i mean it seems like it's contradictory but really it's just the presence of this love and this presence and where is desiring to flow it's wanting not only for you to be free even though because it's coming through you you become free you become enlightened you're lightened by this presence and then that light then begins to desire to flow and this is where the heart star actually turns on into its correct flow of motivation is no longer motivated by how can I get this how can I fulfill my mission how can I make money? How can I feel better? This force takes care of all of those energies inside of our being just by the mere presence of it. 
and then it begins to repair our heart star so that it can easily fractal and flow into this world. Right, and then that drives us, becomes our golden compass where it begins to help us navigate our life. All of a sudden, the questions that we're asking is, how can we become of least resistance for this light to reach as many corners where this light needs to go as possible? And this is where the greatest fight of the Christ and the Antichrist exists in our very heart star between our awareness of this light's desire to move us and our resistance to that for any reason. And those resistances are usually just our wounding as our, our programming, our fears, right? And those things, we have so much compassion for them because it's a little bit intense. What we're experiencing is a little bit intense. I mean, it's not like we're just witnessing universal creation coming to completion or anything like that i don't know you know do we like is not can we actually fully even grasp like what that even means with our human mind but we're just watching it happen nonchalantly <laughs> like oh just another sunday morning <laughs> just hanging out watching the universe graduate <laughs> So breathing that through the heart star here as we're transforming any resistance, any dams that we've built in ourself. It's safe to open. It's safe to feel the immense love that is all of creation all around us, that we're made of it, our essence. It's safe to feel it. It's our greatest protection. So many stories want us to believe that we are in danger and that's the curse. That's part of the curse of Yahweh. That is part of the curse of the crucifixion, right? Is the crucifixion wounding or seals. So currently we're working on releasing that crucifixion seal in our heart star But any crucifixion seal, its only curse intention is to lower the mass of Christ consciousness that is able to be held within your field. It's not a true fear. It's in fact an AI frequency. It's an implant, it's a curse, right? It's impacting our field. So we can change the angle from which we're looking at the fear of instead, instead of claiming it and identifying with the fear, we can say, oh, actually, I don't feel that way. <laughs> and we're just allowing that energy to move through the heart star. And remembering the vibrations of dignity elegance why is it that this image of christ that is constantly being pushed into our field right it's like being robbed of our dignity being embarrassed imagine the embarrassment that is held in the planetary body and also in our soul's bodies throughout 
ritual sacrifice and ritual abuses, so much of that energy is put towards shaming and embarrassment, right? All of these are code crashers. Code crashers, genetic code crashers, neutralize and damage our ability to express ourselves, express the true coding that we have in our soul's body and in our DNA. And so if the Christist, the Christed energy, the Christed consciousness, this pure, innocent, infinite, eternal, golden, loving, courageous, beautiful consciousness, if this is what you truly are, then those things which are making you believe that you are not those things, that are enforcing the distortions, the beliefs, the fears, those things are code crashers. Good work, everybody. Hmm. Yeah. So allowing this frequency to be repairing our heart star and all the code crashers, the implants, the crucifixion curses. You better believe that Kara is hooking me up with these upgrades. <laughs> I was, I, after that whole day of very intense, I mean, it's been very intense the last, I guess, five days, but um, I was in the bathroom and I think I was brushing my teeth and all of a sudden I remembered the first thing Kara ever said to me. I'm coming to teach you how to materialize things from thin air. <laughs> I had no idea what she meant by that. Whew. All right, let's see here. Tune in. Okay, let's go ahead and amplify the frequencies that are working through the heart star because I just want to get through these energies here so long as it is in right accordance with every person's highest self, every person's body. Let these frequencies be adjusted to each person in their highest comfort as well as their highest growth as well. Okay, so then we see that the new age community has inserted a whole bunch of code crashers into our consciousness and our beliefs as well. And some of these things are very subtle. So any stories of victimization, right? Any energy that's actually giving power to the distortions, giving power to Satan by giving Satan more clout than he really deserves when we say we're in this war and it's like no actually god is literally just flowing into our field christ is literally just coming in to reclaim the world that's actually what is happening very gently even very quietly but very powerfully this is just what's happening another code crasher that we have is this bifurcation, right? We're trying to put all of the spiritual people in one camp and say, just don't look at those sheeps. Don't look at those vaccinated people. Like they're not God's people. Like they're not human beings. Most of them wasn't even their fault that they've been subjected to code crashers their entire life without the support of their starseed teams and DNA. I mean, we're lucky that we didn't get bombarded as deeply because of the support that we have we are lucky for that and we should be grateful and we shouldn't 
judge other people. Now, none of us would be judging them had not been these consciousness inserts, the, these viruses that are code crashers, because these things are blocking. I mean, we're already born onto the planet, right? They can't kill us. And so the next thing they can do is to block source energy from flowing from inside of us out into the world. That's the next thing. If they can't kill us, then they can at least shut us down, <laughs> which seems also to be um, uh, weak, let's say. Um, Alex says, why can't they kill us? Well, you know, clearly the consciousness has increased on this planet. I mean, you can't just kill people in our society like you could thousands of years ago, right? Consciousness has increased no matter what people want to say. Consciousness has increased. Civility has increased in a lot of ways. Civility is a very grounded architectural reflection of Christed consciousness in a way, right? It's a, it's less barbaric than <laughs> going into the next village <laughs> and pillaging it and setting it on fire. <laughs> we don't have that anymore for the most part, right? So that is going on a lot less. So in our society, I mean, there has been ways, for example, a lot of toxicity um, fluoride is one of them. Fluoride is a highly toxic chemical. It is highly damaging to our biology. These are the ways that they have resorted to harming us. Right? And so Katie says civility is manners and politeness. And I think in the AI reality, that's true. But I think that respect and coexistence, these are universal laws. And so civility can also be a 3D structure of universal law. And that's kind of what we want, right, in New Earth. Defunding the police is a low intelligence way of getting to New Earth because clearly we need the police in some ways right now because in those locations where there are no police, crime rates go up by a lot. <laughs> Homicides go up by a lot. And so we know that in our current consciousness, laws are enforced so that the DNA can be re rehabilitated, right? So these same laws are these force fields of energies that are holding our DNA so that our DNA can rehabilitate without that policing or it's our higher self policing ourself, right? The Again, transmuting the negative connotations of domination and it's the holding of universal law this would be the christ energy coming in and holding our field so we can rehabilitate our dna so this is also what is happening on a societal level um, it's all just in about what layer of the reality you're looking at and we want to be looking through the eyes of unified creation because that's the highest vibration, is the highest timeline, is the timeline of wholeness, is the true unity. Okay, and so from that place, if we understand that this light is whew, here to shine through our bodies, and Shari says the police in most countries are quite distorted in their actions. Absolutely, because they're working for the government and all of that. But definitely has increased. I mean, I think it's improved. I guess in this current time cycle, from what I'm hearing about time in ancient Rome, I mean, I'm like, I feel grateful that I'm not born in ancient Rome. <laughs> I'll say that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they were just executing Christians, letting them being eaten by lions over there, as I've heard. <laughs> it's craziness. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, we're talking. <laughs> it's, uh, it's all coming up to dissolve this crucifixion seal that is in the heart star. This is what we're working on right now. Because I think a lot of us, this is really dimming our ability to be seen. And I'm, this is coming through medicine for me, 
as well because I've definitely been wanting to back into the bushes. You guys ever seen that meme where Homer Simpson is just backing up into the bushes? Like I've been trying to back up into the bushes this whole week, but every time I close my eyes, they keep showing me these visions of God tapping every human being on this whole planet on the shoulder and us being that tap. Okay, that is our mission. Um, <laughs> and also, lol, that meme describes my life. <laughs> exactly, but this is the code crusher. That is the seal that is in our heart. Star is what we're working on right now. It's in other locations. I'm seeing the stars around the crown. So we're just going to clear those out. I'm seeing seals in the base of the feet. We're clearing those out as well. Whew. How are we clearing them? So I hope that we are listening to these transmissions well, both with our physical ears as well as our third ears and our feelers and our sensations so i think that as we are communicating the arcturians and the grid technicians they are holding this field and the field is working on the clearing of these energies that are held inside of our body and our dna so how are you guys feeling give me some feedback I'm definitely starting to sweat. Whew. Okay, so the realization that we're on a mission, the Christos realignment mission, this mission is about rehabilitation of fallen universal consciousness, fallen universal matrices, fallen universal creation energy. Mia says, today I thought I'm not going to survive another year, and now I'm fine. I feel you, sister. That was me, <laughs> like, two days ago. And then I was like, wow, being so dramatic. <laughs> That's so funny. One time I was just failing or flailing. I was, like, in such an emotional turmoil space. And Shane took me for a car ride because, you know, in the Chinese astrology, we're dogs. I think that's why we go for car rides. That's, like, our... Hobby. He's like, all right, you're feeling crappy. We're going for a car ride. And all of a sudden, I'm like, car ride. No, that doesn't actually happen. I was still in a crappy mood when I was in the car. Of course, he drives me to the lake. And when I got to the lake, I said, okay, I'm going to humble myself and ask for guidance. And the lake says, if you don't want for things to be dramatic all the time, then stop making everything dramatic all the time. <laughs> And I was so mad. <laughs> I was like, that's so insensitive. I can't believe you're not even listening to my stories and my feelings. And <laughs> But then <laughs> the peace in the lake and the wisdom was just so present that I literally just threw a tantrum on the ground. And then I was like, fine. I can, I understand, right? I understand the parts of me that are addicted to the suffering, addicted to the tension. Something has to be wrong all the time. That's a code crasher. So if we don't want things to be intense and dramatic all the time, then stop making things dramatic and intense all the time. And so that was great advice. <laughs> Okay. So we're in this container of rehabilitation and I feel like we are stem cells. I used to think that we are immune cells, but now I think we're stem cells. Yeah. 
<laughs> Whew. Yeah. And Anne says, stem cells can do anything. Yes. It's the infinite creativity. And like I said, just, and I think Alexis is in here now. I gave you a shout out just five minutes ago and she must have heard me. She's like, oh, Z's talking about me. I gotta go. Because she, she just like that. <laughs> She's just psychic like that. But I was just giving you a shout out because I saw that article you posted about the star that just exploded that sent all those, that ray of um, cloud of gamma radiation to the earth on the 9th that we are still integrating and upgrading from and will be forever different from as the energy continues to land and evolve and activate our DNA. But just like that burst of stem, uh, that burst of gamma radiation, we, uh, just as that burst of gamma radiation was created, was intended, was birthed through the imagination of creator for the love of creation in this planet, so were we born out of that same intention. So creation birthed us, stem cells of the universal oneness onto the planet in other planets in many, many lifetimes. And while it's very difficult for every single one cell to understand the story of the whole, to understand exactly what God is doing, <laughs> um, I'm sure every stem cell loves the body. Loves the body so much that it does whatever it can. It just has this devotion and surrender and trust and faith and it just knows what it's doing. So when we're connecting into that totality, that intelligence, we realize that we are those stem cells and we're here on this mission. And our mission is actually celebration. It's remembering coming to um, coming back home inside of ourself to the remembrance of our true self the true essence of our Christ consciousness and then literally being the trumpets that announce the taps on the shoulder that creation <laughs> is literally I want to say dying but that's not the right metaphor I want to say that that creation is living to do for all of humanity it's just waiting it's just every single human being i'm watching walk by in the sideways i'm seeing this golden sparkle just tapping them on the shoulder like when will you be ready to come home well when they hear the homing beacon well where's the homing beacon that would be you <laughs> that's your job <laughs> So then what is keeping us from yelling the good news as loudly as we can? <laughs> these code crashers, these seals that we have in our light body that are blocking our ability to be filled up with this energy. And this leads us to try to do God's job without God. All right, so <laughs> this completes our first segment we're going to continue um, in half an hour. We're going to take a brief pause. I'm going to go feed my baby. And uh, I'll see you guys in half an hour.